Pollution, one of the greatest challenges that we face in the 21st century. Pollutants can enter the environment from both natural sources and through human activities such as agriculture and industry. It can end up in our air, ground, waters and ultimately in all living things. If allowed to run unchecked, this could pose a serious threat to the health and well-being of future generations. Fortunately, research is being done to help prevent this. I'm here at the Open University in Milton Keynes to talk with some scientists who are working on new and exciting projects to combat this global issue before it's too late. Oh, hi there, Elsa. Oh, hi. I can see that you're digging a big hole there. <laughs> can you just explain a little bit what you're doing? Uh, well, I'm actually digging up earthworms. I'm collecting them over here. I'm going to be looking at the effect of pollutants on these earthworms. Oh, I see. Are earthworms important then, um, with relevance to pollution? Uh, well, yes, they are a very important soil species. They affect the fertility of soils, so we need a healthy earthworm population to have good yields for crops as well as wild plants. Uh, they're also eaten by a lot of other animals, such as hedgehogs and birds, so that the pollution that's accumulated within the earthworms can affect other species of animals as well. So I, I can see how it affects um, the other plants and animals. Um, is there any relevance then to people? Well, yes, because the same pollutants, such as arsenic, for instance, um, are also affecting humans. And they have such hazardous effects to human health as heart disease and cancer. But unfortunately, for those particular reasons, we can't do research on humans. However, we can do research on earthworms. Uh, I can uh, raise them up in a lab, I can expose them to various pollutants, and I can directly observe if an exposure to, for instance, arsenic can, uh, to one worm can affect its children and grandchildren. Oh, so you're gathering all this information on earthworms then. Can you then directly relate this to humans? Uh, yes, because pollutants affect our cells and earthworm cells in the same way. While, for instance, our bodies might be slightly differently affected, the cellular eff effects are pretty much the same. Also, this transgenerational effect I was talking about is mediated via cellular mechanisms. So I can do this research in earthworms and then this can help to direct research in human health. Oh, I, see, I can see how that all works now. Well, you've quite clearly still got a lot of work to do at the moment with your digging, so don't let me keep you, but thanks very much, Elsa. Yeah, thank you, I'll see you later. See you later. So, we have just heard how the pollutants contained within the soil can affect the animals living within it. However, pollution is not just confined to the ground. It is also found in our rivers and lakes, where it can have other impacts. Hi Glad. So you work on pollution that occurs in the water. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Well Jamie, I'm actually focusing on one pollutant in particular. That pollutant is metaldehyde. Metaldehyde? I don't think I've ever heard of that. Can you explain a bit more about what it is? Sure. Metaldehyde is the main ingredient found in slug pellets which are used globally to rid of slugs and snails from our crops. Unfortunately, due to the usual UK weather which is wet and windy, unlike today, this causes the metaldehyde to be washed and blown off our crops and into our watercourses. This is where the pollution is beginning. Ah, OK, I see. So how does your research project begin to address these issues? Well, I'm actually here today collecting one of my little devices here. This is the chem catcher, which has been developed at the University of Portsmouth. I'll be deploying many of these along the River Thames, where they will remain submerged for between one to three weeks. Whilst submerged, the river water will flow past the base of the device and the metaldehyde within it will stick to the soft disc inside. This is called the receiving phase. I will then collect these discs and analyse them in the lab to find out the average concentration of metaldehyde in that water course. Once I've collected all this data, I will then be able to map out where the high concentration areas are in the UK. We can then use this information to work with the users of metaldehyde to reduce the application, thus reducing the pollution. Well, that sounds really important and useful, Glenn. Well, shall I take your chem catcher and get that back to the lab? Yeah, sure.
Hi, Nathan. Hi, Jamie. So, as I understand it, you work in the field of nanotechnology. Uh, could you just explain to me what, what that is? Well, Jamie, nanotechnology is the process and manipulation of working with materials at the nanoscale. That is to say, one billionth of a metre. Uh, and to give you some idea of quite how small that is, one nanometer is to a meter as the size of a marble would be to the entire Earth. But that's just inconceivably small. That's just mind-boggling. So these nanoparticles, do they pollute the environment in any way? Well, there are lots of naturally occurring nanoparticles, uh, such as you get in volcanic ash and in very fine sand. But we're now entering an era of man-made and engineered nanomaterials. Um, for instance, zinc oxide, which is now used in a lot of sunscreens, um, as fa finds its way into the environment and waterways, and this is a cause for concern for us. Oh, so nanomaterials occur naturally as well as being man-made. So these man-made nanoparticles, do we know how, what impact that they have in the environment then? Well, that's a great unknown at the moment, but the fact is that these, ma these nanomaterials are so small they can get inside your cells and do all sorts of damage. Uh, and once they're in the environment, they're very difficult to contain and remove. Um, so the research we do now will, it will be important for us to see, as these materials become more widespread and widely used, how to deal and cope with uh, them. Well, this just sounds like really important and great stuff, Nathan. Um, thank you so much for speaking to me. I'm going to let you get back to your work, and uh, thanks again. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Over the course of the day, we've looked at how pollutants can affect living things in different environments. We've spoken to only a few researchers whose work in the field is helping us to understand the impacts of past, present and even future pollutants. And it is only through the findings of work such as these that we can begin to understand these impacts and therefore start to reduce their effects on human health, plants and animals and the natural environment.